In this lesson, we're gonna learn how we can display our users' diary entries out on a map and allow them to click on a map marker in order to view the corresponding diary entry. Now it's worth noting that later in the course, we're gonna do more than just let our users tag their location. We're actually gonna let them search for a location and add this search location to their diary entry. But we're gonna start simple here by focusing this feature around the user's current location. So I'm gonna start here by adding an input to our form for adding the location for a diary entry. And I'm gonna start just by duplicating by hitting Command or Control D on my keyboard. I'm gonna duplicate this top title input group and let's just change this title to say address and this entire group will actually call group address so it's really clear what's going on and I'll just move it one step down in the form and then just update this input. So the input, this is gonna be input address. I'll clear out the initial content and then we're gonna set this content format to a type that we haven't dealt with yet in Bubble. And that type is an address. And then we actually won't make this required either. And now I wanna show you right away what happens here when we try to add some value into this address field. So let's say that I just type a part of some address like New York. Watch what happens when I click off of this input. See how it just became like a formatted address. We added the state and the country. So what is actually happening there is that Bubble has this integration with Google, the same Google that provides Google Maps. And what Google is doing is it's taking some part of an address and it's turning it or converting it into this geographic address data type that we can actually work with in Bubble. Because what I can do is if I duplicate this text element, I could point the data source for this text to that input address value. And then what I can do is a few different things. I can calculate the distance between this address and another address, or I can do things like pull out the latitude and longitude for a particular address, or even extract certain details from this address, like the city. So if I try to type here again, New York, you see that that section of the address is being pulled out. Now what you'll find is that if you try to test this with even just sometimes more than one address, it just doesn't work. And that's because this integration that Bubble has with Google, it's only allowing us to make a certain number of these formatting requests in a limited period of time. And that's because we're developing here a test version of our app and all of these requests to format an address that Google is fulfilling, they all come with a cost. And Bubble at the moment is eating that cost on our behalf. So what we have to do instead is we have to set up our own integration between our app and Google so that anytime that we're using any of Google's location services, a suite of products that let us work with addresses and locations, anytime that we're doing that, it's being billed to our Google account not to Bubble's Google account. Now, there is a detailed article in the Bubble manual for how this all works and a video as well. And I want you, if you're adding location services to your app, to watch this video and set up what we call our API key, which sounds like a bit of a mouthful right now, but all it is is an ID for our application that we provide to Google whenever we ask it to do this formatting of an address. And that allows Google to know that hey, this request to format an address, it came from our application. And therefore they know that they can associate those requests with our account and bill our account. The costs for these are really, really, really low. So I wouldn't worry about the cost right now. And then once you do this, you should find that you're able to add different addresses into this new address input and you'll see that they're being formatted correctly. And what's more, we can actually save the value from this input onto our diary entry. So if we go and we look at what happens when we hit the save button, we're making changes to a diary entry, we could add another field here for saving the location for this diary entry. So I could create a new field here called location or address, and we could set this to be this basic type here called a geographic address, right? So this is the same data type that we're working with within the context of that input. And that means that we can actually set this to be the output 
from that input address. Now, this means that if I add some city name and save this, what you'll notice is that in the database, we have the location saved. And this is, remember, a geographic address data type, not just a text value. And that means that on our diary entry details, for example, if I duplicate this group date, and this is gonna become our group location, I could display, let's say, the location for this diary entry. So I could go diary entry details, diary entries, not the date in this case, but now the location. And let's just change the canvas placeholder here as well. And then change the icon here to be, let's say a map marker icon. And I could even do things like add a workflow so that when this group is clicked, what we could do is we could go navigation, open an external website and add in here the diary entries, locations, and then link to Google Maps or link to Apple Maps. And so I'll show you how this works. And how this works is that if I now click on that button, it will actually open the Google Maps app if I have it installed and take me to that location. So this is the basics of how this geographic address data type works. In the next lesson, we're gonna learn how we can actually find the location of the user's device and save that into that address field. So I'll see you in the next lesson.